Hello friends, this is Odds, and today's video is an updated guide on how to get the adept achievement for all of the characters in the game. We're going to very briefly explain how the survivor ones work, which are all the same, then we'll explain the guidelines and general idea for killer, and after that we'll go over every killer and I'll recommend a couple loadouts for each so that you have the best possible chance and don't spend all day trying it, because it can be frustrating if you don't quite understand the system. Uh, feel free to use the timestamps in the description if you want to skip to any part in particular. As for Survivor, it is extremely easy. All you need to do is survive. Uh, you obviously have to equip the three teachable perks that come associated to your character. So for Dwight, that would be Bond, Leader, Prove Thyself. You're not sure? No biggie. Open up the screen and make sure that these perks right here are the ones that you have equipped. Do not equip the fourth perk. You're not allowed to equip a fourth perk, but you are allowed to equip items and offerings. So if you want to increase your chances, you could bring a strong medkit, for example, that is a pretty reliable item to bring, and maybe send yourself to a map that you are familiar or good at. If you want to take it even more seriously and don't want to even rely on your teammates to survive, you could always use an offering to make the hatch spawn at a particular place. And knowing that, you also bring a key, uh, add on to our plus, uh, a, a purple or iridescent key, and then when everyone else has died, if they have died, you can still find the hatch and open it quickly if the killer's not on top of you. So you can even guarantee escapes, even in the most dire situations with a loadout like this. So you could use a lot of that if survivor's giving you trouble. Now, unfortunately, killer is a little bit more complicated. With killer, you don't just need to do your job and kill people. You actually need to satisfy the emblem system. The emblem system is the thing at the end of the game that tells you how well you have done, and it bases it on four different emblems. They're not related to blood points, so you can get a lot of blood points, you can get a lot of kills, and not do well in the emblem system. Um, the emblem system goes something like the entity hungers, if you didn't do so good, brutal killer, if you didn't do too bad, um, ruthless killer, and then the highest rating possible, merciless killer. And that's the one you need. You need to get merciless killer uh, as a result at the end of the game. Now, unfortunately, this uh, metric is tied to your rank, aka your grade. So, uh, if you're out of the iridescent grade 1, if you're a very high grade, the system is extremely strict and you need to do extremely well. It's very, very difficult, especially with some killers, to get it. So, what I recommend is that you wait to the 13th of every month and then the iridescent grade uh, or whatever grade you're in will reset back to 20 which is Ash 4. That's exactly what happened just right now. Uh, notice that I have a lot of blood points from the rewards. So right now, if I attempted this, it would be infinitely, infinitely easier than doing it a day ago. So do yourself a favor and wait for the 13th of every month. I'll still give you tips so that even if you're uh, grade one, you have very, very solid chance. So how exactly do you tickle the fancy of this emblem system? Very simple. Um, one word, you need to extend the games. You need to extend the games artificially. Maybe try to get one survivor killed early on so that the game is under control, but after that you need to, the game to really last a long time so that you do everything the game expects you to do. If the survivors do gen super quickly and get out, uh, Gatekeeper, which is the generator uh, emblem, will not give you good points. You will not have to that time to do anything else. You will lose. If you do too well and kill all the survivors too quickly, you won't get enough hooks and you won't get enough chases, and all of these emblems won't work. So you need to find a middle ground of not getting destroyed, but also not destroying the survivors. If you notice that you're getting a lot of downs, you're doing really well, step back a little bit, make sure you get plenty of hooks, um, and that should be it. If you get lots of chases, lots of hooks, don't let survivors do gems too quickly, or heal too much, or escape your grabs too much, all of these emblems should be fairly doable. And to that effect, I'm now going to give you tips on every killer, uh, and which loadouts you should be aiming for. These are just ideas. You can obviously give it your own spin. And we're going to begin with Trapper. Now, I really recommend that you send yourself to um, Midwitch if you can find an offering for this. Sending yourself to Midwitch is a great way to make sure that the exit gates are really close. If you get three kills, you'll likely get the fourth. It's a decent map for Trapper, and unlisted in the description, you'll find a video with some really nasty ideas of places you could trap. Uh, you will be running the trapper sack so that you have traps on your arms uh, at all times and also the honing stone so that if people step on your traps they do not get away from them themselves make sure that if someone steps on a trap you give them a good hit might help with the chaser emblem your perks are not incredible but at midwitch they are fairly doable and if you take a little bit of inspiration from the video below uh, i'm sure you'll find some decent points uh, set a couple traps at the start set a couple of them and immediately try to find someone 
um, go into chases, try to fight for the first gens a bit, which is hard with Trapper. And if you get hooks, try not to cap them too much, even though it's a strength of Trapper, um, because that will hurt your emblem system. And there you go. You can always, uh, don't forget to trap exit gates if you're looking for the final survivor. A more uh, classic approach would be to send yourself to a small map. I recommend uh, the Saloon, which is a classic, you'll see this many times. And then immediately go opposite from where you spawn to find survivors, getting to chases really, really early. And you can even place traps in very obvious spots and they won't be able to disarm them very often because of the bloody coil keeping them injured. Which will not give you chaser, but will give you malicious emblems. So this is an idea as well. If you don't like this idea, you could also go for the darkened traps uh, with the tar bottle. Um, and keep the trapper sack if you want to. And this would also be a very, very decent loadout for trapper. Uh, you do this, very, very high chance you'll get it very quick. Uh, next up is Wraith. And I highly recommend that if you don't want to think it through too much, his perks are not great. They're not going to help a lot. Send yourself to an indoor map. I think RPD can work, especially against beginners that get lost a lot. Uh, although you might also uh, favor Midwitch or Hospital. And use the muffled, uh, sorry, the, the silent bell, as well as the all -Sing spirit. The all -Sing spirit basically tells you which gens are being done when you cloak based on the color. So all you need to do is cloak, look at the gens that are starting to change their hue, approach, uncloak from behind some wall, and get a hit. Try not to get grabs too often, you can definitely do it. Try not to get grabs too often because you might actually not get enough chaser. And do this, repeat, do this, repeat, do this, repeat. Anytime you catch them healing and so on, even better. If you're very confident about finding survivors and you don't want to even have the information about the gems, you could also go for the all-seeing blood instead. This will basically just give you auto reading around you and it's just as effective, especially if you send yourself to the hospital, which is an even smaller map, Larry's. So this stuff is really, really simple. You just go hit and run, hope that you get a kill early and then toy with the rest. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, another idea, if you also don't want to complicate yourself, is give yourself some decent add-ons overall, like speed, uh, or even um, auto breeding, as we mentioned, or you could even go with um, uh, blind, uh, blind Warrior White, which will give them mangled effect, which you do not have otherwise, or, or faster uncloak, or faster breaks, all of which work really well on Salute, because you can break pallets quick, you can play around them fast, and it's a relatively small map where you get your first hits really well, and you can put survivors in a disadvantageous position um, while you farm the rest of the emblems. That's what I would recommend for Wraith. Now, Billy is an interesting character. Uh, unfortunately, his chainsaw has to be used very, very carefully. If you use it too much, you will not get enough chaser emblems, because it only counts as one chase, even though you go through two health states, so use your chainsaw very sparingly. You can send yourself to an open map, like one of the Azeroth maps, or even better, a farm map, and use the Apex Muffler and Tinkerer in conjunction to really catch survivors off guard. When Tinkerer triggers, your terrorists will disappear, and that means that by the very definition of this add-on, you will have zero terrorists and zero chainsaw noise. So you can use this to interrupt someone on an open gen and get an insta down. Uh, do this enough to control the game, but once the game seems out of the under control, feel free to forget about your chainsaw and just hit them with your basic attack. If they pre-drop pallets in front of you, you can also take advantage of that with the low pro chains. The low pro chains allow you to go through a pallet and hit a swabber. It will not insta down, which is great, but you still get a hit and it's a great way to have short chases, which the emblem system likes very much. Uh, with Lightborn, obviously, you'll be immune to flashlights and enduring helps a little bit as well as pallets, so it's not too bad. A different idea, if you want to be a little spicy, is to send yourself to an indoor map, which is not the Kill Billy's main strength, but it does make low pro chance, especially in RPD and the like, very powerful because the pallets are typically difficult to drop and dodge out of the way of. And it also makes Tinkerer very strong. So if you send yourself to an indoor map and just kind of forget about your chainsaw and only use uh, uh, information from Tinkerer to constantly catch people off guard, constantly get hits here and there, that might be enough. You would also be wise to bring the Mother's Helpers, which is going to make your chance to charge much, much quicker anytime you get stunned uh, by a pallet, which is also reduced by Enduring. So these two ideas probably will get you some success. Uh, the Nurse is extremely powerful and her uh, add-ons alone can carry you. Uh, I recommend you sell yourself to Midwitch. It's easily her best map. If you don't have a super horrible time finding someone uh, and you get 
them chases early. Uh, Thalophobia will begin to do its slowdown work immediately, and Nurse's Calling will very soon begin to carry you, because if you're in the, in the center of the map, you'll almost see everywhere around you. Um, of course, you could bring double range or range and recharge, whichever combination. This would probably like be one of the strongest, but whichever combination fits your particular uh, inclinations, I recommend this one if you're if you're not super uh, convinced. Or you could just send yourself to an extremely open map like Saloon and immediately blink pretty much a w the furthest point from where you spawn, and you are very very likely to find survivors. If you want to increase your chances even more you could bring double rage, which is very, very disgusting on this map. And if you want to be a bit cheeky and try to get people at gens and so on, you could keep one range and even bring the add-on that will make you undetectable to get quick hits, which counts as very quick chases as well. So that's some ideas, but there's so many, many different things that you can do. Uh, follow some of the tips down there. Uh, practice a little bit of nurse. You'll get this one very, very quick. I'm completely sure. Uh, now moving on to Hunters. Unfortunately, Hunters does not have any amazing set of perks, but Lullaby can, so, uh, can sometimes delay survivors, so make sure that they have chances to cleanse it and just waste time dealing with it. And every now and then, someone will walk into basement and Territorial Imperative will trigger. If that happens and you're anywhere near, go there. Especially with Oak Half, you will never let them out. Basement in Saloon is, a, is very easy to get, both of them. Um, so I do recommend it. Don't stay around basement, but it's very, very strong. Because with the Oak Hub, you can throw a hatchet and immediately follow it up. And you'll run out of ammo very rarely if you also pair it with the infantry belt. I recommend this setup. You have a couple of games here, you're likely uh, to get far. A different idea is to replace the Oak Hub with a Glowing Concoction. Uh, the Glowing Concoction makes it, makes it so a survivor has an aura when you hit them with a the hatchet. So even if they go behind walls and stuff, um, you will still be able to follow them. I think that if you send yourself to Yamaoka, there are many obstacles and many tiles that are very confusing for killer and survivor, but that they become very uh, killer-sided if you hit a survivor leading into them, because you can see them through walls and line up follow-up shots. So this would be one of my ideas. The basements here are not incredible, but especially if you go to Sanctum of Wrath, despite the size of the map, you will have a lot of visibility, and it's sometimes easy to convert um, three kills into four kills. That's my recommendation. Then again, if you want to play it safe, you could also go to a map that you know is decent. Send yourself to uh, Macmillan and hope for one of the two or three stronger maps there. Uh, and that would also be a decent idea. Many many hunters also favor Azerobs because the maps are fairly flat and not very vertical. Uh, so if you want to send yourself to Azerobs, you probably you know, in one or two attempts, you'll have a, a good map and a good chance to get the Adept. Uh, okay, Myers has one of those insta-down powers. Um, built into his kit, but you need to be very, very mindful. It is a good idea to pop your tier 3 early and get a couple down just so that the team loses its momentum, but after that, be extremely careful. You do not want to instant down, instant down constantly, and luckily for you, Say the Best for Last is an amazing perk to do just hit normal hit and run things. Uh, sending yourself to the saloon is almost a great guaranteed way to catch someone in the main building and get out of tier 1 fast, or go and find them in the open, find someone in a horrible spot and get out of tier 1 fast, which you have to do. Once you're in tier 2, uh, get to tier 3 fast with the Gemmire's Memorial add-on, or if survivors are going behind buildings and stuff, you can stalk them for a little bit, and the mirror shot will let you know where they're going. This is very, very helpful uh, if you'd like to... Um, to do little mind games and, and keep an eye on when survivors are going. I, I find it helpful. If you were going to one that's less open, or if you want to take advantage of your smaller terror radius, you can't go wrong with a dead rabbit. That's also really good. And if you really don't know what to do, you could also not go go with the memorial uh, go wrong with the memorial flower, which also speeds up your your stalking. So that's an idea. Now, if you want to play heavily into the whole small terror radius idea, you could turn yourself to an indoor map. Uh, Larry's is fine. Have the dead rabbit and try to play into your perks to the best of your ability. Please do avoid tombstone, uh, longer or infinite tier threes. These will probably make you too slow at the start uh, and not uh, pair well with the chaser system. Uh, an idea that is not completely insane is to use the vanity mirror, which locks you in tier two, yes, but also. Uh, makes it so that you always find survivors when stalking near you. If you're having trouble to find the fourth survivor, um, it wouldn't be a crazy idea to pair uh, Dead Rabbit, which gives you all the benefit in Tier 2, and Perma Tier 2, Banning the Mirror, in some small map 
to constantly find survivors. Uh, though you wouldn't have, obviously, the tier 3, and you would need to rely heavily on your perks. But it is an idea if you want to try it out. Uh, next up is Hag. And Hag honestly shouldn't be that incredibly difficult. Oh, uh, you're going to forgive me. I don't know why. I don't know why my perks are all messed up. These are not the, um, the appropriate perks. But no worries. Uh, we'll equip them. It is... Ruin. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Uh, obviously, make sure you have the right perks. Send yourself to Midwitch. Midwitch is disgusting. It, Midwitch has so many corridors where so many things intersect. You have two doorways, one hook, and one gen all on the same spot. You can put traps at choke points in the middle of doorways, uh, in the middle of corridors, and you will catch people constantly. You might not even need her very strong cicada and, and distance add-ons because the map is just so small, but you could use them. I otherwise recommend speed. And if you want to be particularly disgusting, run the rusty shackles, and when survivors trigger the traps, they won't even, lay, even realize they've triggered them. You could trap totems like this just to get grabs and stuff, but I recommend that you, for the most part, allow them to mess with the totems and hit them a bunch. Make sure third CL is on everyone. Let the chaos ensue. And obviously, if it ever comes to um, exegates, the exegates of, of Midwitch are excellent. Even if you don't really know what you're doing as hack, this map is really easy to play. All you need to do is need to trap a few... Uh, a few choke points where you spawn and then immediately go around looking for people eventually someone will 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 be pushed into or randomly step on your traps and then the chaos uh, ensues if you don't like indoor maps you feel very claustrophobic send yourself to a flat nice outdoor map you can go roll with azrobs you could also send yourself to um saloon if you like and give yourself distance and maybe trapping speed or some other utility add-on that you find useful and bam, uh, eventually, if you follow just the most basic uh, of guidelines, you'll be fine. Do remember, though, not to linger too long around hooks and not to slug too much. You want people to be hooked several times for the emblem system to do its work. Uh, moving on to Doctor. Um, I would recommend that you run Discipline and High Stimulus Electrode. Uh, if you expect survivors that you go against to be very strong, these are easily some of his best add-ons to make his chase very, very powerful by extending the range of his shock and making the shock happen quicker with some other nice downsides. And I think Midwitch is also awesome. Um, it's easy to hit multiple survivors in this map, though be careful because monitor abuse makes your terrorist smaller when you're out of chase. And if it ever comes to the final survivor, them opening the gates is extremely unlikely. So yeah, uh, there's also many pallets here that can be denied or even completely shut down by good shocks. Uh, but if you're not so confident in your ability to use shocks or you expect your survivors to not be so great, you could go for a more gimmicky approach that might be even be more effective. And that is to send yourself to Larry's. Larry's is a small map with lots of line of sights and your smaller terrorists will actually help you. And guess what? As soon as you use your blast, your terrorists will become even smaller thanks to calm. So you will actually be uh, sporting a 60 meter terror radius-ish. Um, which is basically the same as a Myers in tier 2. Very, very powerful. Uh, not only that, uh, but survivors will hear random terrorist noises and be very, very confused and not have any idea what's going on. On top of that, Restraint makes it so that you see um, ill illusory doctors even in Madness tier 2. And, and also you see the autos of survivors, so when your terrorist is small, you can actually approach and really mess with them. But the significance of seeing the illusory doctors is that if the final two survivors are both in some tier of madness, you can down one and then look around the map and eventually the white aura of the illusory doctor will tell you, hey, the final survivor is there, which is very important because that can help you get the four kills and that might be the difference between adept or no adept. So uh, purple and restraint, uh, purple calm and purple restraint or the best or, or the best version that you can on this map, small tier radius, you'll really mess with them. If you want to be, honestly, just annoying, there's never any issue just sending yourself to another indoor map and going double every King and every Queen. That's also very, very... Um, just spam everywhere, and new players have a hard time playing against that. So that's always an option as well. Now, Cannibal, much like Hillbilly, is a little bit uh, difficult, because if you use Hishenso too much, not only will you not get value from Franklin's, which is a basic attack, and Noka, which is also a basic attack perk, uh, but you will insta down and not get chaser emblems. So use your chainsaw to get downs, and when the game seems under control, you start using your mallet any and every time you can. 
Uh, I recommend that you send yourself to Saloon. It's a great map to break breakable walls in uh, in between chases, which is uh, something that the cannibal is uniquely good at. Um, and also, if you go to the opposite point of where you spawn, you are almost guaranteed to find survivors and immediately have a good chance to maybe catch one of them in a dead spot, uh, in, a, in a dead area. With the chili, your chance of goes extremely far, but we also have a utility uh perk, uh, sorry, a utility add-on that helps you even when you're not using your chainsaw called the light chassis. If you go by a bunch of uh, bushes or are checking an area of the map where you suspect people are, you charge your chainsaw very briefly and this add-on will show you the autos of people. It's going to be so funny when you find Claudette hiding in bushes uh, or Dwight entering lockers because they hear a terror radius and you go near them and you tap your power and you see them through walls. So this can be very, very useful in that regard to help you find survivors between chases or when there's one left. So yeah, a uh, very nice utility, goes really well to find survivors that hide in bushes in the salon, which you'll see plenty, plenty of. Uh, then again, um, Midwich is a great opportunity as well to, to get a depth. Uh, you can still use the chili, and if you are afraid that you're going to be breaking pallets a lot with your power, you could bring the primer bulb, which will make your chainsaw recharge quicker so that you get more charges faster and you can alternate between dropping pallets, walls, and downing survivors with less downtime. Um, though, you know, other add-ons can be adequate as well. If you want to use your chainsaw even more, you could go double chili and that would be okay. The point of Midwitch is that it's a fairly simple map and it's a fairly easy map to f for, uh, to make sure that you get your fourth kill because the exit gates are so hard for survivors to, to deal with. But do be sure not to camp hooks or anything like that because we need to play into the unknown system. Um, a crazy idea that is actually not, actually not too crazy at all. If you are if you're doing well with Cannibal, but you are struggling to get your Invitescent uh, Chaser emblem, you could go for the Eerie Flesh and the Speed Limiter combo. Now, this is a very unusual combination, okay? With the Speed Limiter, you will not insta down survivors, which is bad. But with the Eerie Flesh, you'll get your charges back. So basically, you can hit a survivor with your Chainsaw and then press M2 or the attack power again and then immediately hit them again, pretty much uh, insta downing them still. So this combination can make... It doesn't make him better, but it makes him very good at getting double hits fast. And if you if a survivor unhooks in front of you, you can get three, uh, actually maybe four hits, all depends on border time and so on. You can get three or four hits in like seconds, which is awesome for a chaser. So if that's what you're struggling with, believe it or not, this can be a very viable combination for that. Uh, we now move on to the Nightmare, and I really highly recommend that you load up on good add-ons and bring the red paintbrush, and maybe in the black box for some um, endgame potential um, to secure your, your, your early pressure. If you find a survivor too early and you don't have this add-on, they will not be asleep and your powers don't work right away. But with Red Paintbrush, everyone begins to sleep, everyone panics and tries to find a clock or everyone that you find you can immediately chase and start to use your power on. So I really, really recommend that you do this. Send yourself to the Saloon or some other equally small, uh, favorable map and immediately go to the opposite point of where you spawn. You're likely to see someone's blue aura since they're asleep and immediately take chase and harass the heck out of them. Use your snares to the best of your abilities and you'll get your first downs quick. Then, because you, everyone is falling asleep uh, faster than usual, you'll be able to teleport to gens more. You want to defend gens and fake teleports constantly so that you delay them a bit at the start, and so on and so forth. And then when it gets to the end game, fire up will help a little bit with chase. Uh, remember me, especially if you've killed or are currently harassing the obsession, will slow down the gates. And then you still have blood warden. Uh, although you don't want to play into end game, it is a nice uh, security uh, safety mechanism, I guess. But remember, if a survivor is asleep and they open the gates. For a few seconds, they cannot leave. So even if it looks really dire, don't forget that this add-on is a thing, and this could literally save your life. Because a swapper that escapes and it's blocked, you can hit them, hit them again, hook them, now trigger Blood Warden, and maybe catch two or three others. You never know. So yeah, play into the black box if you can. Another idea that you could go for is to send yourself to an indoor map that is inherently more confusing for survivors, and then start spamming the heck out of fake pallets everywhere you possibly can. Uh, since everyone starts asleep, uh, they are more likely to not communicate, not see it, and not play really well. This is a much simpler idea, so if you are not extremely good at using snares, or you believe your survivors are not quite at that level, uh, this might be a decent alternative. Uh, we now go to the pick, and there are many, many options. The one I would recommend is send yourself to Midwitch. Midwitch has three amazing qualities for the pick. Number one, very, very easy to make huge endgame plays because the exit gates are close to each other. 
Number two, uh, some of the pallets in this map, you need to just break and go through. They're, they're so-called god, god pallets. They're just very strong. But many of them, if the survivors don't drop them right away, you can just sit on the pallet and then use your power and pretty much guarantee a hit with the ambush. So even if you're just a little bit experienced, this map can really help with that. And more importantly, this map has the most annoying box placements in the game, pretty much. Um, it has boxes that are close to each other, but that require you to go up and down and up and down and around floors, which makes them prime targets for you to uh, harass them, or better yet, just waste time passively. So we're going to send ourselves to this map. Uh, the RPD can also have a similar effect, but it's a little bit harder to play. Um, and then I want to use the, the videotape, which will make everyone spawn with a box. This is perfect because it will make the first few generators take a very long time and that's awesome for the gatekeeper emblem it's not so awesome in the mid and late game your pressure there is going to begin to evaporate but your early game should be very very good uh, watch out with make your choice try not to use it too much to insta down don't lose your mind over this and remember that surveillance makes gens a little bit louder and also turns yellow if you kick gens when people get back to it and it's very important that you use the green annotated plan instead of the stronger purple, if possible, because the green actually makes sure that people will not die to their to the trap. Dying to the trap gives you points, but it also robs you points if they do it too early. If a survivor is dead on hook and they die to the trap, fine. If a survivor has never been hooked and they die to the trap, you're probably not going to get a depth. So um, this add-on has a downside that makes the timer longer and ensures that they waste a lot of time, you get an extra trap, and no one actually dies. So I uh, highly recommend this combination, should get you the adapt very, very soon. A different alternative, if you want to be more chase oriented, uh, bring the stronger sketch, which will give you a total of three traps, because you're going to pair it with Amanda's letter. And you're going to send yourself to another indoor map, Larry's, where you'll be able to crouch and see everyone. And this will be a bit like Mirror Myers kind of stuff, where, where you can walk a little bit, crouch, and you'll see people and they'll have no idea you have this add-on probably, and give you easy hits. Uh, do watch out though, no, don't try to go for grabs or anything too fancy like that. Just just get hits, uh, short chases, um, bit of chaos, put a few traps down early. This is a bit more hit or miss, but it can also be really, really fun. Uh, moving on to the clown. Believe it or not, I still think Midwitch is good for him. The couple nasty windows you can block with Bamboozle. It's a bit difficult to get to gens in times, sometimes to get uh, pop, but you'll still be able to do it from time to time. People healing anywhere around you will have the very annoying chorophobia, which they will not like, so they'll need to relocate. And then you can bring yourself um, uh, along with the gym bottle, which gives you two extra bottles, super easy to use, and the cigar box. This is the key, really, really nice uh, add-on. This makes it so that your yellow bottles give you wall hacks. What you can do at the start of the match, if you're not sure where you are, is throw a, a yellow bottle ahead of you in a corridor, get invigorated by it, and then just look around above, uh, below you, whatever floor you're on, you're going to see people from very, very far. And this will let you find people that are hiding, let you find people that are doing totems, let you find people that are trying to be sneaky. And in some places also help you in chase as well, if you use the yellow bottle uh, along with your purples. And you can spam your purples a bit more because now you have this one. So that alone is a decent, um, decent uh, setup. But if you want to play something a bit more classic, you can also go with the Flask of Bleach, which further slows down survivors with your purples. Uh, ether, which makes it so that um, the effects last even longer. And with these two, even even the, the 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 most difficult pallets, you can slow them down, break them, and catch up shortly after. So if you send yourself to a small map and immediately get in chase and get it down relatively early, relatively early, that would be a cycle of pop uh, on a gen, find survivor, down them, pop on a gen, and you know these perks will hopefully carry you a little bit. Uh, next up is Spirit, which gets really, really nasty with the strongest add-ons. Uh, now, the strongest add-ons are up for debate, but especially if you're new, bring the Mother Daughter Ring. It's a ridiculous add-on. Uh, this add-on and the Dry Cherry Blossom both remove scratch marks, uh, the, dry, the Dry Cherry Blossom in particular. Uh, but all you need to do is find Survivor in a corridor, use your power, run out of them, uh, and whenever you hear the heartbeat instinct, you unphase and hit them. It's really that simple. It's super, super simple. And unfortunately, in a, in the map uh, that you can bring them to called Midwitch, they don't have a lot of room for mind games or dodging or just holding forward because you are just so, so fast. Not only that, uh, the few strong pallets that they can drop, if you get stunned by them and have Spirit Fury, you can play around. If they find totems and do them, which is a big mistake, Hunter can trigger, but you know, 
you don't need to worry too much about that. And the endgame will probably be difficult because Rancor will be feeding your information and at the endgame you can moi the Rancor person. But again, you shouldn't do that unless that person's been hooked several times. So try not to use the insta down from Rancor and haunt it too much. Rely on just your extremely powerful add-ons and a map that benefits you and is easier to play at uh, to get your idea. Now, another idea is to maybe not rely on the detection from the Cherry Blossom, instead bring the other best combination of add-ons, which is the Yakuyoki Amulet and the Modern Daughter Ring. These two add-ons together, just take my word for it, uh, all they do really is just make you very fast, recover very quick, and, and have insane duration, which you shouldn't use uh, completely unless you know what you're doing. Just use an Ensure Burst. Uh, the, the catch with the Swamp is that there's two maps in the Swamp. One of them has very, very fixed totems, which makes Haunted Ground likely to trigger, it's the Green Pantry. And the other one is very, very open, which makes, which means that once you're in chase, uh, Swappers will have a hard time losing you. And furthermore, both of these maps have extremely wet sounds. So even if you're not extremely good at hearing, the... The tapping sound that survivors make on the ground is very easy to follow, and the vegetation also helps and lends itself really well. So both of these maps with these add-ons can be very decent if you know to avoid chases in the one or two troublesome areas. So highly recommend that, but then again, then again, the spirit is so strong and works so well in every map that you might simply want to use an offering to know where the hatch is going to spawn, kill three people, close the hatch, and ensure that you also kill the fourth. Uh, you might not even need a map offering, so yeah, that's how strong spirit is. Uh, now for Legion, uh, sending yourself to one of the smallest, most two-dimensional maps with these two add-ons is a crime, and you're gonna do it. Uh, the Never Sleep pills make you very, very slow, okay? This is bad. You do not want to use your Frenzy from afar. This is a bit of a complicated one. Instead, you want to get very, 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 very close to the survivor. When you're certain that you can hit them, you now use your power and you hit them with your power. Now, after that, you'll be a bit faster, even faster still because of the mural sketch. And then any hit that you do after that will make you faster and faster and faster. And you will have a 20 second, a 20 second Feral Frenzy, which is almost inescapable in this map. So what that means is you listen for this cordons, you find two people, get two hits relatively early. The third person will almost never be able to escape you. The fourth person will most certainly not be able to escape you. Um, if they're anywhere, anywhere near, and then you hit them a fourth time, and then you hit them a fifth time, and they go down. Or you hit someone else a fifth time. Uh, when you see the screen flash red, you can go for the fifth hit down, which is really, really nasty. And that alone, and discordance alone, and you harassing them in, in Larry's, which is a map that has great potential for three gens, is awesome. Um, have some basic do's and don'ts with Legion. If you hit a survivor and it's clear that everyone else is far away, just cancel your power. Uh, but you also have an alternative. If you don't want to go for anything fancy like that, Simply send yourself to a good map that you like. Uh, some people favor Azrobs. I think uh, Saloon is completely fine. Verticality is a bit tricky. And bring some simple add-ons like extending duration and extending uh, speed. And then let Discordants and your good judgment do the job for you. That's it. That's so simple. Now for Plague. Uh, in my opinion, the best thing you can do with Plague is infect a couple gens earlier, uh, early on. If you find a survivor, maybe infect one or two, and the moment that you see a survivor next to a red fountain, and with two apples, you're gonna have two of them. Oh, there you go. With two apples, you're gonna have two of them. Pick up a red fountain and start to use it in chase extremely aggressively. This gives you quick chaser, and it, it basically um, makes sure that the emblem system is doing well. Anytime survivors are on the ground or on the hook and you don't have your red power, you puke on them to infect them, and anytime you're in chase, you puke on a survivor and you hit them. The only times you should fully infect a survivor is if they make a, a horrible mistake and they're cornered and it's a free down. Uh, so you do it and you insta-down them, you'll get less chaser, but hey, I guess you start winning the game, so maybe you can make up for it later. So yes, uh, unless survivors make a horrible mistake, you don't want to fully infect them. Infect a little, hit, or infect a little, leave. Um, it's very hard for survivors to, to, to play around a very aggressive play that uses her power well. You might need a little bit of practice. Um, and don't forget that your perks are there to help you out. Um, I think sending yourself to open maps like Azerobs are great. Well, the, some of the maps in Azerobs admittedly can be a bit rough. I'm thinking mostly Gas Heaven. But if you get something like Wrecker's Yard and the RNG of the fountains is good, so many loops like the cars are horrible. If survivors ever go there, all you need to do is hold your puke a little bit, puke over them, and they cannot do anything. Many of those loops are just death drops. 
against her red puke. So yeah, uh, that's why I recommend this. Then again, if you want to be extra evil, you can send yourself to a very small map that's indoors. Uh, and then all of your perks and eerie add-ons are really powerful. Mm -hmm. If you hit the obsession or the obsession becomes injured randomly as of the next update, you will lose your terror radius and then you'll still be able to see people that are fully infected. Since you have corrupt, you can afford to just puke on three or four gens at the start so that they can't do anything right. And anytime they complete a gen, difficult as it will be, you get your power. So you don't even need to worry about phantoms. These would also be really, really powerful if you want to go with that. You just need to mind which parts of the map are a little bit difficult to puke in and leave those survivors for later. And that should get you plague results, in my opinion, relatively consistently. Uh, next up is Ghostface. As another of the killers that can insta down, you need to be extremely careful. Insta downing is super, super, super useful, but also really uh, bad for Chaser Emblem. So you do it enough to win the game, and as soon as the game is already under your control, you have one kill, and they only have they, they need three gems more. You can start to just do normal attacks. Uh, one exception, however, might also be at the end of the game. At the end of the game, if you have two survivors left, one thing you can do is mark, you know, go out of your way to mark the survivor, even if they're injured, down them when they're marked, and this add-on will reveal the last fourth survivor so that you can turn a three kill into a four kill, which is sometimes what you need. Anytime you down a survivor with the ghost face caught on tape, iridescent, you will get your power back. Don't use it right away because you're going to lose it if they look at you, but you can hook them, move on, use it, and keep this hit and run mentality. Whenever you pick up, Thrill and Tremors will let you know which gens are not being worked on. Ignore those, and which ones are. Go for those. Um, and yeah, uh, Amalir is also a nice tool. Anytime they evolve, you might see their auto for a little bit, which can help you uh, get some hits. And honestly, Furtive Chase has some interesting things to say about it. You can completely ignore this perk, completely forget about it. It honestly doesn't even need to be part of your strategy. Just completely forget about it. Um, sending yourself to a map like Yamaoka, um, uh, Family Residence, and Temple of Wrath, I think is advantageous. In Family Residence, the map is really tight, so it's easy to sometimes hide at the start and still catch someone crossing it. And if you go to Temple, you, the Sanctum of Wrath, you have a high line of sight from the start, so you could immediately go there to get into a chase right away. Then again, there's nothing wrong with sending yourself to an indoor map, um, which many people favor on Ghostface, or a small map that has exposed gens like the Saloon. And if you do that, it's a great idea to bring Philly, which makes marking faster, and the driver's license. The driver's license is basically one of the only add-ons in the game that, effecti that, that effectively counters gen repairs. So if you see a survivor uh, doing a gen in the main building or in gallows or from afar, you can fully mark them, even if they're injured, just to block and regress that gen, which is very, very huge and extremely helpful. So that can also be a combination too, if you'd like to try that out. Uh, next up is the Demogorgon. Unfortunately, the Demogorgon no longer has an adept. His perks have become base kit and his achievements associated to him have been turned into normal uh, vanilla achievements that have nothing to do with demo. So yeah, you don't need to get this achievement, sad times. Next up is Oni. Uh, again, with Oni, massive insta down potential, massive slugging potential. You could probably win the game at four gems if you kill everyone quick. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Hit a survivor, chase them around, make them vault stuff, make them drop pallets. The splinter hole will make you get more orbs, you get your power. And then you can use your power on that or other survivors, but try not to insta down health the survivors too often. If you keep them all injured, Blood Echo becomes a little bit stronger too because it will rob them of powerful abilities like Spring Burst, Death Heart, and so on. And, you know, the other perks are not too crazy good, but Sanchin can be helpful to understand where you're headed and whether or not you should commit to a chase because there's a lot of pallets or there's none. And Nemesis, believe it or not, even by itself can be good. Sometimes you get stunned by a pallet, you leave a Subaru, and that Subaru for the next 60 seconds is scared for their life because they don't hear it terror radius. So, yeah. Uh, I do recommend you send yourself to Saloon. It's a really good good map to find people early and probably to get a hit early and if you have your power you can also use it to break some breakable walls even meet chase relatively quickly another idea is to send yourself to midwitch and then switch out the duration for speed add-ons and then it's really hard to avoid you in this situation um and midwitch of course has a lot of innate advantages a little bit hard to catch your first survivor and get your first hit but once you get rolling the end game is very very hard because the etiquettes are so close together so this should give you a good chance all throughout the game to have a comeback even if things don't go well at the start but feel free to um feel free to spice it up you might even be okay going to a big map and just bring a blueprint so you know where the hatch is and if you know where the hatch is then you can kill the third survivor close the hatch fourth survivor eventually you will find 
So that's also one idea. Uh, next up, we have Slinger. And Slinger has some decent perks that are really, really fun. And if you are familiar with all of them, awesome. You'll be able to use them really well sometimes. Especially if you send yourself to a small map where you can quickly aim and shoot people on platforms to get them off gems to trigger Deadman Switch and whatnot. Um, you will also want to pay attention to Gearhead and even try to bait them into doing Retribution, which could be really, really helpful. So this is awesome. Uh, the reload add-on, I think, is great. It rewards people that are efficient, uh, helps people that are inefficient. And I also think it's not a crazy idea to bring the Rusted Spike, which is basically a way to slow down healing and give you a bit more chances to interrupt their healing, slow down their gens, and so on before you seal the deal. Selling yourself to Salud, I think, is a no-brainer. Uh, super, super small map, easy to find people in, easy to snipe people in, easy to get your first chases. Lots of holes in many, many loops that make it easy to shoot through and then reel and hit. So that's awesome. Uh, but if you want to, you can also send yourself to uh, Midwitch. Midwitch is a, a bit harder at the start, um, although your perks might help, but the end game is much more geared towards you. And in Midwitch, it is very, very doable to do even deaths and coin shots. If a survivor is in a hallway, sometimes without anywhere to go but front, they will run away from you. And if you hit them from 12 meters or more, that survivor, which is now very easy to reel in because there's no obstacles, now goes down in one hit. This is a bad thing. You don't want to insta down too often. But doing it once or twice early or late game can be helpful to help secure your initiative, kill their pressure, or even make a comeback if they're suddenly starting to do gems a little bit too quick. So you can do this uh, as well um, and try to shoot people from afar to, to secure that first couple downs or, or real like, game back in that was getting out of hand. Next up is Executioner. Uh, lucky for you, Executioner cages are the same as hooks. So everything I say about hooks, oh, get a hook here, uh, it's the same with cages. And it is extremely viable to cage a person, go after them, and then immediately hook them or cage them again. So uh, playing this very, very dirty definitely pays off. And it can work really well in a small map like Saloon, where if you cage someone in one area, they are never too far from you. You can almost always go and find them. Let's say that I cage someone in main building. I can kick the gen in there, become undetectable, thanks to Trail of and then go to the mill, the opposite side, and find two survivors in a very delicate position there. Um, so yeah, uh, anytime you get double hits, I don't hooks and stuff, awesome. Although try not to camp hooks. And every now and then, Deathbound and Force Penance might come in clutch. You might also want to use range add-ons. Uh, now, some people uh, use their power too much and run out of it. If that happens to you, bring the Tablet of the Oppressor. It will let you have your power uh, last a little bit longer while you hold the, the, the knife down. And also, the Mannequin Food is a great uh, option. And it's the one, in fact, I recommend in the next one. Mannequin Food makes it so that if you leave trails on the ground, they last 20 seconds longer. So if there's like main building or some loops that trouble you, uh, you put trails in them for almost a... What is it? For almost a minute and a half-ish. They, they will be there bothering survivors, which is awesome. Um, Midwitch is also great. Uh, small map, very easy to bottleneck uh, certain areas with trails. So you don't need to camp people, but you can totally leave trails all around them if you put them in basement and so on, and make it very hard for them to avoid cages and hard for them to also navigate effectively to rescue each other. Not to mention that the end game is extremely killer-sided since the exegates are so close to each other, so you can turn a three kill into a fourth kill. Uh, rather easily. Next up is Blight, and out of all the builds I recommend into this video, this is the one that I 100% believe in. This is a free adapt, and you're gonna get this first try so, so quickly. You send yourself to the game. Alternatively, I guess Larry's can work too, but send yourself to the game, and the game is 95% pallets and like two windows. And with the compound 33, pallets are not a hindrance. They're basically a moderate inconvenience. When you, when you use your power into the pallet, even if you haven't bumped into anything else, the pallet immediately explodes and you recover extremely fast. Especially if you pair this with the Adrenaline Vial, but your second atom can literally be whatever the heck you want. You could even bring uh, Camp on 21 if you care. I don't really mind. Just, just Camp on 33, pallets are eviscerated. So you chase a survivor, they drop a pallet that normally is extremely powerful, you just bump into it, gone, and then immediately hit them again. Uh, that's if they get to drop a pallet, because with Blood Favor and Undying, they will likely uh, have some pallets blocked every now and then that they can't even drop. So, very, very powerful stuff. Dragon's Rip can also help you here and there. Don't need to abuse it uh, to get insta downs or at least scare them off a little bit. 
uh, make sure you don't get too many insta down. So this is a super disgusting build, super disgusting build that leaves that I think most survivors are just unequipped to deal with. Uh, if you find that there's a survivor that is particularly amazing at dropping pallets and also doesn't get hit, go for someone else and you'll catch them off guard. So that's the only mistake you can make with this. Will work 100% or your money back. Uh, uh, alternatively, if you really don't like that idea, nothing wrong with speed add-ons, alchemist ring, send yourself to midwitch. You hit a survivor, they speed off into uh, the opposite direction through a hallway, but because of the alchemist ring, you get your power back. Now you bump into something again, catch up, hit them, two seconds later, they're down. Absolutely disgusting combo, absolutely disgusting map, and very, very powerful because of the multiple floors. You can hit a survivor, they go upstairs, and the two pallets upstairs are blocked by blood favor. Uh, very, very, very hard um, for two hours to play against. You will get this event very quickly. If your first chase is a bit unfortunate, you're a bit unlucky with gens and they pop, you might feel like you're not doing too hot. But don't worry, these indoor maps are hard to find gens in. Give it a couple attempts, I'm sure you'll get it. <clears throat> oh, um, I'm afraid that while I was doing all of that, I had the I had the wrong tips on screen. My bad. These are the tips for Blight. Read up a little bit if you are curious. Uh, next up, Twins. Now, Twins has a very major downside, and that is the fact that Victor does not give Chaser. If you do most of your heavy lifting through Victor in terms of Chases, your Chaser emblem will be very, very bad. That's why I highly recommend that you abuse Coup the Grass to find people. Um, uh, sorry, uh, abuse uh, Hoarder to find people, use Oppression to delay and find people, and use Coup de Grass to get hits and downs with Charlotte as much as you can, especially when the game is out of the under control. At the start, you will need to use Victor to build up some pressure. And the Silencing Cloud is an amazing tool, an amazing tool to switch to and from Victor and be stealthy and, and catch up to someone. So you can hit a Survivor, and that Survivor with Victor would be... Um, oblivious, and then you can go and hit them with Charlotte. But if multiple survivors are there, you're not going to fool them. With this add-on, you can you can cause a lot of chaos and be very unpredictable. And that's why sending yourself to an indoor map can be a really big idea. If you don't love the idea, you can also send yourself to a somewhat flat map, uh, say I don't know Azrob's uh, records, and and you'll also have a decently good time. If you don't really love the idea of using Victor. Uh, you can also just have the add-on to switch back to Cla to Charlotte faster, or even the Toy Soldier um, to see the art of someone that kicks it, or the Irides double iridescent, so that if someone kicks Victor, they're now insta-downable, which is not a great thing, because you need Chaser, but it can also help to get your first down and then get the ball rolling. So that's some idea. Now, if you uh, want to get to a map where you'll get into a chase right away, uh, you can't go wrong with Saloon and some good add-ons on Victor, um, to to quickly find them and then make the most out of your out of your perks. It's a small map too, so hoarder and oppression will will give you a bit more value than in really really large ones. And that's pretty much it for them. A bit tricky, but don't forget that you can use Victor uh, for utility. You can leave Victor on a hook and then hook there and use it just for info and try to let Charlotte do most of the attacks if possible. Uh, now moving on to Trickster. The Sphispin Soda and the Cage Hard Shoes are insanely good add-ons, and you wouldn't think by, by reading the description that they are so strong. This one makes you start shooting much faster, this one makes you lose much less distance. So even in a map like Midwitch, where survivors will often just hold forward, you have an amazing time once you are close to them, delivering very deadly blows that they can run away from. And the idea is that you catch people somewhat in the open, or in loops where they really can't escape you, and once they're there, their health states just disappear, which is awesome. Uh, the couple strong windows can also be countered by crowd control if it's if it's up. And if you don't love indoor maps, even though this one's really, really good for no way out, and even a bit annoying for Starstruck, you can also send yourself to an open map that has somewhat low loops, uh, such as, for example, the, the Astro family maps. So that can also totally work. Um, another idea, um, give yourself uh, add-ons that extend your uptime. Uh, this one extends the amount of knives that you have, and this one makes you get all of your knives back if you have main event uh, ready. So you immediately go for survivors opposite of where you spawn in saloon, get into a chase right away, try to count your knives uh, and use them carefully. Lots of loops in, in this map where you can have holes to th shoot through or, or places uh, where survivors cannot avoid you for very long. And then just go from chase to chase to chase with as little downtime as possible. 
If you want to, you could also bring the ear photo card. And if you catch Swabber in the open, you go knife, 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 and then instant on them with a basic attack. Just to just to have a bit of an early advantage. But this is bad for Chaser, so I don't super recommend it uh, otherwise. But yeah, there's a lot of fun little combos that you could find. Just remember that Starstruck will make people around you insta instant honorable. Try not to abuse it. It's good because it will make the people around you scared, so don't be afraid to just leave the hook and try to uh, save gems as much as you can. Uh, if you make the first few gems uh, not pop immediately, even if all survivors live very, very late into the match, you always, always have no way out to rely on. So make sure you get a few hooks before this triggers, and you'll have a very, very good chance to get a winning endgame. Uh, next up is Nemesis. Nemesis, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, relies heavily on his um, zombies. And sometimes zombies are amazing, sometimes zombies are worthless. I recommend you send yourself to a small map. Saloon is great. And if you see where two hours are, even an, you'll have an even easier time picking uh, a group or a person that's in a really bad spot. Um, if a person's in a really bad spot, that might be an insta down uh, or a very, very quick down, which is awesome. And if it's a group, even better, because you'll be able to hit one person with a tentacle and then quickly switch to another who thinks they're hiding and also hit them with a tentacle. And if you do that, now you're in tier two. All of the bad pallets in this map are super easy to get, to get hits over. All of the breakable walls, if a, you don't need to break them in advance, just chase people there, and bam, you you hit and break the breakable wall if you're in tier 2 immediately. So all the breakable walls in this map are really, really dangerous for them. Every now and then, Hysteria will mess with them, and every now and then, you'll have a gem that you've contested, that you know they're going to get back to, and if you're going to get a down soon, Eruption, especially in the next patch, is going to be huge, 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 and very big delay. Um, let's say, you can also use this in a bit of a complex way, okay? Let's say that you know that you have enough hooks, right? And you know that you're doing well, but you really want to defend the last gen. And a survivor is on the hook, and they have 10 seconds or 20 seconds, and they're about to die. If you have eruption, one thing you can do in this situation is go back, last second, camp them. Someone will come, you hit them. Someone will rescue, you hit them right after. And now you trigger eruption, so the other two survivors who were rushing that gen, bam, now explode and can't do anything. And then you hook, and then maybe from that point you end the game. Don't camp too much, because that's bad for, for emblems, but this is something that you can use in a clutch. As for the add-ons I recommend, Marvis Blood, you get out of tier 1 and into tier 3 faster. Simple stuff. And Broken Recovery Coin. Uh, Mid-game and late-game can be difficult for an enemy. If you have this, they have one less case, which is good. Uh, but it's far from your only option. If you're going to send yourself to an indoor map, where zombies can be very annoying at times, and Hysteria can actually be kind of confusing, uh, having something like Gel Sandwich or Nemesis Alpha Parasite to know where they are or give them less of an idea of where you are and then having the serotonin uh, the serotonin, uh, ser serotonin, serotonin injector uh, can be really huge. Anytime you find a zombie, you can kill it. Even, even if um, right after you hook someone, stuff like that. And then even though you are very loud, you can still catch people relatively off guard and throw them off from your real location, which in indoor maps uh, can be quite devastating um, if, you, if you're lucky with the timing. Uh, that's it. That's really, really it. Just maybe avoid the insta down add-ons and, and definitely do not uh, chase a guy and, and hit them 60 times to the tentacle if you're missing. If you're not extremely experienced on Nemi, totally fine to just hit them once when they're dropping a pallet or whatever and then just do basic uh, normal killer chasing stuff. Next up is Cenobite and he's a killer that has an amazing time slowing down survivors. Um, Gift of Pain is going to be huge next patch. Uh, Plaything is a great um, mid-game uh, surprise factor and delay. And that log is also really, really good just to delay people in general. So uh, that alone is great. If you send yourself to Midwitch, not only will you have massively uh, uh, tilted in your favor endgame because of the gates being closed, you will also have a really good map for the Black Lens and the Fang. The Fang is basically uh, an ability, that uh, an add-on that uh, enables you to injure survivors with your chain which as far as I'm concerned counts uh, as, uh, as chaser, as far as I'm concerned. So it's really, really, really powerful. Uh, although you should also do no more chases. With this, you can very quickly find survivors and gens, send your portal up, you don't see anyone cancel, you see someone, hit them, now they're injured. And very, very quickly, you can put three or four survivors in the injured state with basically no progress down, which is super, super huge. Once they're out of the injured, you don't have such a strong chasing tool, but you still have the greasy lens, so you can hit them with a the chain and then hide behind a wall. You see exactly where they're going. The moment they break away or try to do something smart, you catch them right there and then. And if one of them in particular seems like they're a bit confused and a little bit clumsy, you focus on that person, get them out of the game, then later chase the other three on and off, on and off until your adept is there. Another idea that can never be 
uh, too bad. It's just send yourself to a small map, have the impaling wire, which makes chance harder to get rid of, have layers of mains, which allows you to interrupt the queue from almost anywhere if you're in the center. Um, and bam, just get into a chase as soon as possible, get a couple hooks early, plaything will begin to slow them down, the Scorch will give the pin will begin to slow them down, maybe they pop a gem, but they will not pop the second one too quick because of deadlock, and now if they pick out the box, you go harass them and try to juggle all of them, do normal Cenobite things, you'll have a super, super good time uh, while doing this, I am certain of it. Uh, next up is Artist, and I really do think that... Uh, indoor maps are very confusing for survivors and very easy to line your shots uh, and, and birds at. So sending yourself to lairs with severed hands, I think is a good idea. Anytime you have a decent idea that, that a survivor is on a gen, you can send one bird and hit both people there and then send extra birds to try to catch them. A very dirty idea that you can totally do with this add-on and this add-on only is uh, send uh, place a bird towards a gen, walk a little bit, not even too much, well, like uh, a couple seconds, send another bird. If you have this add-on, Without this add-on, doing double bird hits is very difficult. With this add-on, double bird, uh, double bird uh, hits is really, really doable. Because this add-on will hit one survivor, extend the birds to the other, and then the second one will hit the second. The, the second bird will hit the second um, survivor and injure them right away. So you can totally uh, spam birds towards gems and get lots of value with this. Uh, even more so if you find pain res uh, hooks. And the carrion is just there to help you do this faster. Though you could also totally replace this for a similar effect uh, with the thick uh, tar, which is uh, a similar has a similar effect. If you want to be crazy, you can also run the eerie feather, which only gives you two birds, and constantly shoot two birds at different gens, and constantly go around the map, indoor map, with lacking terror radius, which can be tricky. For the survivors to play around. Needless to say, if they do totems, you use Pentiment to slow them down. And if you have the opportunity to hook everyone, sick, now the gems will be blocked as well. If you want to play a more uh, classic, uh, less risky approach, send yourself to Outer Haven. There are a couple maps in Outer Haven that are rough, but all of the maps in Outer Haven have flat gens, which means that all of the gens are on the same level. There's no buildings, there's no basements, there's no weird stuff, right? There's nothing for gens to spawn above or below you, which means that you can constantly send birds out and constantly harass people and maybe even get double hits before they remove them with the thick tar. If they ever play at a loop, you can place very simple birds in the pallet's windows or around pallet's windows uh, with Matthias's baby shoes. And what this will do is basically show you the art of survivors that are going around your birds. So if a survivor thinks that they can outsmart you by running in front of the bird real quick, you can just see their aura and react to that and hit them immediately. So this makes you very, very deadly, even if you're not that great of an artist and don't understand her birds too much, and even the most uh, solid loops that otherwise survivors have a good time at. And that's it for artists. Might take a few games if you're getting used to her power, but that's all. Uh, we now move on to Onryu. Now, Onryu has the ability to murder survivors at any hook stage if they level, if they get to, um, if they get to condemn. Try not to do this unless you're absolutely sure that you're out of the good on hooks, because that could actually hurt your emblem. Other than that, uh, teleport places, interrupt them, kick gems with Calobrine, interrupt people with Merciless Storm, use the info from Floods of Rage to teleport. Uh, since you have Iridescent videotape, when you come out of a TB, if you hit someone, you reset all the, all the TBs, which is awesome, or all almost all the TBs anyway. And if you use Floods of Rage with Irritate, you can come out of a, of a somewhat distant TB and still be stealthy for a little bit to ensure that hit happens. Uh, you do this and send yourself to a map, or better yet, use a hatch offering to know where the hatch is and close it to secure the fourth kill, and you'll eventually get this. It shouldn't be too difficult. You just need a good team that maybe doesn't have four medkits or amazing comms. Uh, alternatively, not a crazy idea to send yourself to an indoor difficult map for two hours. Make them all spawn with... Um, carrying tapes with the tape editing deck, which immediately puts pressure on them, and then have the ring drawing. This is an, an add-on combination that really uh, encourages you to down people, leave them on the ground, let the, they pick each other up, blah, 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 uh, and then they start to get come down. So you don't really want to actually commit to that. You just want to do this a little bit, just so that they waste a little bit of time early on until you have a, a, an early chase uh, wrapped up, and then all your perks and all of the hooks and all the pressure you build up begin to do their work. That's pretty much it for Onryu. Don't forget, if you're chasing a survivor that needs to die and someone is starting to body block them, you can always the manifest to avoid body blocks. Do every other little trick you can. Such as, for example, if you look at the TB and it has 
uh, a, a tape playing at it, that means the survivor is nearby. So that could help you find the fourth survivor. If it's playing static, that means that there's no survivor there. Don't bother searching in that area. Know all of those little tricks and you'll be fine with Ondre. And then we get to Dretch. Now, Dretch is a really interesting character. Unfortunately, Dissolution and Septic Touch are Terror Radius based perks. So if you have the nightfall time happening remember that these two perks unfortunately don't work on their own killer downer seville though is awesome anytime you're lost open a locker you're likely to see someone and a very dirty trick that i've done a few times that you could totally try is at the start of the match wait until your power has recharged to about two thirds open a locker and then look around use your power and look around and you'll see many people go around locking lockers if you teleport to a survivor that is locking a locker which is very doable you can do it one out of two times at the start of the game and throughout, um, you will immediately grab them and immediately get a hook, which could be really, really huge for your pressure. If you use the field recorder, you will start in Nightfall, which can be disorienting for survivors, and also uh, have Nightfall at the end of the game. And I think the lavalier microphone is also helpful. This can this is a bit like a Darnish Seville add-on, where if you teleport three times, uh, you will see all of the survivors. And this is very useful to see the final survivor or two to make sure that they don't get the hatch or something like that. It will also be hard for them to get the gates if you send yourself to Midwitch, which is, which is a very decent map with lockers all around and very disorienting for some newer players especially. So that's a pretty decent uh, chance for you to, to, to use all of this in conjunction to get a death. Alternatively, uh, start in Nightfall, send yourself to um, Saloon, immediately go to the opposite place where you spawn or do the Darkness Seville strat, up to you depending on your spawn. And since it's Nightfall and it's a very open map, you will see them. They will not see you. You can immediately try to pick whoever's in a bad spot and immediately get your first chase in. If you hit them during Nightfall, they'll be Blind, Mangled, and also Hemorrhage, which is a decent way to slow down survivors without bringing any other extra perks. Alternatively, you could use the add-on to come out of lock lockers faster. Alternatively, you could use the add-on to see when people lock lockers, which is helpful and very basic. Alternatively, you could have the boat key to teleport a bit quicker and also remove all of the locks in end game. Uh, so yeah, those are some of the ones you, you could try and there's probably other strategies that are also perfectly viable. And I hope that with that, I reached one hour, damn it, uh, you have a decent idea of how to do adapts on all of your killers and you don't have a horrible time. Uh, the most important one, by the way, by far, is to do this on the 13th of every month when you're grade 20. Uh, do not do this when you're grade one. It's going to be an unnecessary headache. Uh, at any rate, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully not the next adept. Because come on, you guys, you guys should have this right now.